Right lads, I said uh, we were going to show you how the night, uh, night vision unit goes together, so we're going to put one together here on a truckster's rifle. Uh, what we need is a 30mm mount. This one's just a cheapo, cheapo 30mm mount, but this large nut makes it easy for on and off. This is mounted on the scope upside down, you'll see that now later on. Okay, we need a little piece of Picatinny rail. This is an old one that I cut up. Okay, need a camera. This is a panel camera. Now the only issues with these cameras is this connection on the back is very, very weak. They need to be taped up almost immediately when you get them. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this bracket and then we're going to tape this to hold those cables in place because they do break. I've already broken one camera. Uh, this particular camera has it's an IR camera and it has a 16mm lens on it. This is the one that they recommend um, for doing the night vision because it gives you a full field of view through your scope instead of um, just having a little roundy hole or a little roundy spoil hole that you're looking through. Uh, you need for the end of the camera here the video lead is a BNC connector, so you need a BNC to phono connector. Okay, you can get that in Maplins. Then what you need is a screen to view it all on. Okay, this is a three and a half inch screen. Um, you can buy these off the internet. They're for reversing cameras and stuff like that. And as you can see, we have a video lead, power lead, and an audio lead. Or it's actually a second video lead, but you don't require it, so we can isolate that one, that can be gone. Then what you need is a battery pack. This is a rechargeable battery pack. They're about seven or eight pounds sterling. Uh, you can buy them, they come in from China, with a charger and a whole lot. And this will power up the camera. There's a little switch on the side of it there. You can see the little light comes on, just to let you know that it's on. And then, most important, if you're going to be doing night shooting at Foxes, is a night vision IR torch. This particular torch is a T67 IR, okay, made by Night Scout, this one. Um, basically, this is the, the biggest one that they do. Um, I've used it already, and it will easily illuminate out the 500 metres. Uh, the camera, depends on your scope, whether or not the camera will see out that far. But basically, the kit that's on the table here, okay, the T67 IR is about 70 euro, I think. Um, the screen is 14 pounds sterling. The battery pack over here is 7 pounds sterling. The camera, I think, is about 35 pounds sterling. The BNC connector. Unfortunately, we buy that here. Uh, I would buy them off the internet if you're buying them, because it's about four quid here, and you can buy f ten of them for that price off eBay. Uh, the mount is just an old mount that I had. Uh, it just came on a cheap old scope. Somebody came into me with, and I changed it. And the piece of Picatinny rail. Well, you can buy Picatinny off the internet if you like, uh, and just cut it down to size, or if you have an old piece is the way that I've done this one, this is just an old piece that I had lying around. So, we'll get to work and we'll show you how this thing all shapes up and goes together. See you in a few minutes. Okay, first things first. Just remove this little uh, little bracket, it's not required. Just two little Phillips screws. Just take them out. Yeah, that's no longer required because we're going to mount this direct into a piece of tubing that I'm going to machine down to fit onto the back of the scope. So the idea of doing this is that we can protect these three wires at the back. Okay, and the best way to do that is insulating tape. I'm going to put some insulating tape around it now and fix them in place. And 
and all it is is just to stop the wires from getting pulled because they break very easily like I say I have another camera sitting there and uh, we were only testing the camera and the wires broke on it so they are very very fragile Okay, I know this doesn't look the best but uh, it is practical and it does work and it protects those cables quite well just going to lean across here yeah. and when we're taping up the, the back of this and taping this into the Delrin sleeve uh, that'll all get tidied up nicely yeah. So that's that part done, and we can remove that bracket and do away with it. I'll come back to you now in a second. Now, as I said about the the little plugs, this here is the the little plug. It's absolutely tiny. Okay, I don't know if that's clear in the video. You can see the little small plug and the three wires. This is the one that broke on me. I don't know if you can see down there. You've uh, the red and the black are power and the yellow is video and they actually fit inside this in little clips that are crimped I don't know how I'm going to get it repaired but uh, that's basically the video lead off my other camera so now I have a spare camera with no lead I'm going to have to try and get the lead repaired uh, I'll try and repair it myself I'll try and take the, this thing apart and, and redo it but um, just be very very careful with these cameras like I say you break the lead unless you can repair the lead that's it, your camera's useless. Right, so we have our camera taped up. Now, the one thing that we have an issue with is we have to convert from BNC, which is this connector here, okay, it's like the back of a light bulb, and we have to get the video to connect into this video lead, okay, which is, um, what's this to call it? just an AV, it's um, an AV plug anyway so what you need is, you need this little thing here, this is the, the piece that we bought in Maplins and it's a converter from BNC to phono, it's a phono lid right so now we uh, connect that up and that will then connect on like so okay so now we have that rectified okay one other thing that you will require okay is a multi power lead I meant to say this earlier on you're going to need two power supplies so you need a power supply for your camera and you also need a power supply for your screen so you need a two you know, the way that they sell them in Maplins there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight different connections on this one we only need two of them so we can tape them off or do away with them as required um, but we'll, we'll just see, we're going to set this up and get it all working anyway just to let you see how it operates ok so that's our camera is now sorted we'll have to make up an adapter that will hold onto the back of the scope and that. we'll put that away for one minute the next job that we have is our screen ok the screen comes with a little um, adhesive pad on it ok we're going to take the adhesive pad off and there's a little screw underneath the adhesive pad at the back here so just nice and gently with this or not so gently as the case may be let me get in here there's a hole I just want to take the uh, flat plate off it so that we can mount it into so what you have is a little Phillips screw I think you can see that in there just here so we just unscrew that okay, and this simply pulls off we don't require this piece this piece is redundant we can't mount that onto the rifle so what we have now is a nice little round bar okay that round bar just get a measurement on it here okay okay it's about seven millimeters so what we'll do is on the little piece of Picatinny rail that we had 
I'm going to drill a 7mm hole just down here near the end and then we bond this in with a bit of Aralite uh, 2 pack so I'll show you that now in a second okay we're just going to drill um, basically we're going to drill through the centre of this okay I'm going to start off with a slightly smaller hole which is a 5mm hole and then we go up to a 7mm so, start up the drill press aluminium so it's handy enough to drill we go to 5mm and then we go up to 7mm next and change the drill Okay, we're just going to drill now to 7mm. So, same hole, same setup. So, we melt the hole. There we go. And we just cut the drill. Now, yeah, we'll just take this out for you and let you see it. We have a nice 7mm hole there. Just going to show the screen. There's a nice snug fit. It's actually quite a tight fit in there. We just have to remove this little plastic bore on this. And it should fit in just nicely into the hole and then it should be bonded into place. Okay, uh, we've drilled out the hole. As you can see, it's a nice hole. Nice little small 7mm hole. and. Here's the arm at the back of the screen. It's a nice snug fit. Okay, she runs straight in. Nice fit. Now, basically, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use some five-minute epoxy. It's an epoxy resin, two part. I mix it up, and I'll bond it in on the bottom here, and that will fix that in place. The one thing you need to remember is to put it in on the smooth side of the Picatinny rail because when the mount is fitted it will be fitted upside down and you need your Picatinny to lock into that so just remember that it goes in on the smooth side not on the ridged side okay so your screen is sticking up from there that's the way it sits on it okay I'm gonna mix up the epoxy and I'll be with you in a couple of minutes okay we have the epoxy mixed up here Put the epoxy inside the, the hole. Make sure it's well around it. By the way, you can get these sticks in McDonald's. I'm just getting a slagging over that. Drink too much coffee. Okay, so that done. You just push the arm in. And it comes out the far end. And Give it a bit of a clean off there. Maybe have to clean this up once it's uh, once it sets. And that's where she's in, and bonded into place. Now, just make sure it's reasonably straight. There's a little ball joint on the back here on the screen, so you're able to move this in and out, left and right, so you can square up your screen on your on the rifle when you have it on. So I'm just going to put this over near the heater so we can get it to dry. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. Now, just on this, um, this mount is not supporting your scope or anything else. You don't need four Allen bolts in it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to remove two of the Allen bolts. They're um, they're only necessary just to hold it in place. It's not like it's uh, supporting any major weight. The screen is actually very very light. And what we will do is we will mount the mount upside down in front of the turrets on the rifle scope. I'll, um, I'll show you how we do that now in a second. We'll get the rifle up on the bench and I'll show you that. Okay so we're just going to mount this mount. Um, the mount 
and fit it up in front here of the, the forward mount because there's no space at the back. Okay. You don't want the screen too close to you. Um, the closer it is to you, the harder it is to focus on it, especially at night. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to put two Allen bolts. Okay. Two screw bolts. I'll get it on the tread. Okay, so we have one on that side. Trying to do this one handed on. It's not easy. Okay, and then diagonally across one on the other side. Okay, I'm just doing these up loose and we'll turn them up into place. Let um, me just cinch them up a little bit. Now, this can be left on the rifle. Um, just give them a little squeeze like I said this is not supporting anything it's not holding anything but as you can see that is actually quite sturdy it does not turn anywhere now the reason I'm using this particular mount I like this large nut on it because I can loosen the nut put the picatinny on and the screen on and then if I need to take it off if I'm just doing ordinary shooting I can undo the nut lock it up when you're finished you leave the mount on at some point I'll be taking this off and I'm going to put a level bubble into it for truckster uh, level bubble is always a handy thing to have if you're doing any kind of distance shooting at all so that's the mount fitted and tightened up doesn't need to be absolutely locked on rock solid because like I say it's not actually doing anything all it's going to do is hold the screen Flat. Flat. There he is there, look. Bollocks.